Hello, my name's Sean. I'm a computer science lecturer at Swansea University, and I'm going to be making a series of tutorial videos um, for ASP.NET MVC. So these videos are for anyone who um, has some basic knowledge of C Sharp um, and .NET perhaps, and is interested in learning the MVC framework. We're going to be building a web application over these series of videos. The main like people this is aimed at are actually students who are doing uh, the web application course I'm running at the moment. And um, but it's I'm putting it on YouTube so that anyone who is interested um, can see it and use it. And hopefully it's going to be useful for more people than just the students on my course. So students who are on my course and are currently listening, if you have any questions related to these videos, you can ask me either on the comments here or email me, come and see me. Um, and if you're not on the course, you can still ask questions. And if there are other videos you want me to do, if the, um, just let me know. And uh, if I have time, I will do them. So what are we going to do in this, uh, this series of videos? I think one of the best ways to teach this framework, this MVC framework, is to show you the full process of designing and building a web application. And that means right from actually trying to figure out what it is we want this application to do, um, then through to implement implementation and then getting to the finished thing. So the application I'm going to make, or that we're going to make together, is a to-do list. And it's a classic web application um, example and the specific to-do list I'm gonna try and replicate is the one that you get in Trello. Now Trello is a really good uh, web application that helps you with project management um, so this is a card in Trello uh, which I've got set up and I've added a checklist and this is a really nice interface actually I can just add items so item 1, item 2, item 3 and I can check them off. And there's this nice kind of slider here, uh, a bar that's like a progress showing me how many of my to-dos I've done. Um, so yeah, that's the basic, that's what I want to replicate in MVC using .NET. Sorry, if I use, I, I sometimes say MVC, which specific, like that, um, acronym means model view controller which is a, a design pattern um, for applications but in these videos what I mean when I say MVC is ASP.NET MVC web application um, so just apologies if I keep use, using those terms interchangeably so let's look at this checklist and try and see exactly what's going on and then we can use that to come up with a more specific set of specifications for application which means then when we build it we can measure like once we built it we can look back at what we aim to do and we can decide well yeah we did that or we didn't do that so the first thing that i notice is that to add an item is incredibly simple i click add an item and a text box appears i can type in whatever my item is i push enter and it creates the new item and it immediately appears there in the list. Now what's interesting about that from a web application point of view is that I type item five, let's say item five, push enter, it updates this list of to-dos like instantly. I, I see that happens straight away and I'm not refreshing the whole page, um, which is something that's an important thing to think about. Like, it usually with a web application, if you have a form, like a standard form that you enter and submit something, the whole page will refresh. There'll be a new HTTP request and um, yeah, you update the whole page. Whereas this, it's just updating this little area here, which tells me that there's something using doing, there's Ajax being used to do that. And um, there's some JavaScript that's doing a HTTP request behind the scenes, getting a response and just updating this area. So that's something I want our application to do. Same when I, when I check lists, right? So when I say item two is done, um, it's updating that. This is all going to be is stored on a server. So this is all, when I click 
item one is done there's some kind of behind the scenes request being made that updates this item on the server and then updates the relevant um, elements on this page it's not refreshing the whole thing and that's an important thing to, to consider so sorry if that hopefully that made sense um, I'm just going to delete this checklist and make a new checklist which this is the checklist we're going to use for our application so this is what we want our application to do um, so let's think about this checklist the first thing is we want users to be able to add um, and remove items from a checklist um, we want uh, users should be able to mark items as complete um, all of this so this information should be stored server side so all of this stuff this checklist I can launch the like my mobile app Trello app I can go on Trello on a different computer and it's going to have all my details stored on the server um, and so that's something we want to do there'll be a database or something where it's stored the other thing which seems obvious but we should put it down is that um, users should only see to do this they have created yeah so we want to have a concept of users on our web application and we want users to only see the ones that they've created themselves now Trello you can actually give other users permission to see your boards and you can set things as being public uh, but we're not going to go into that detail um, we want our web application to be quite simple it's just to show you how to use the tools so um, okay so we've got they can add and remove items from the checklist um, they should be able to mark items as complete um, all the information is stored server side they should only see two to do this that they've created uh, something else which is quite nice is that when I select um, an item the styling changes so we want um, style should depend on uh, what are we going to call the the kind of doneness of a an item should let's say change if an item has completed yeah you want that um, and we want we want that endorphin hit of like we click that and it's crossed out and it's done right we want that feedback it's kind of a nice a nice little feedback thing I've clicked that I've checked that it's done look it's crossed off and look I've got 20% complete um, yeah, that's quite an important thing I think for a checklist application so I'm gonna leave this here um, I might add actually um, let's see if we can do this bar here this percentage complete bar so um, we also want a uh, what do we call that let's uh, um, there should be a percentage completed um, indicator sorry that probably wasn't a very well written check but there we go okay so these this is going to be our kind of our specifications for our web application this is what we want it to do and this is what we're going to do over the next few videos now the way I'm doing this is I want you to see the full process like the raw process of me doing this um, which means there might be some things like I got an idea how I can do this last thing but I might have to google something as like to figure it out and and that's fine that's the reality of, of development is particularly with web applications the technology has changed so quickly um, that you need to be you know just doing stuff from your memory like it's useful for some basic things but it's good to, to go out and actually look for, for for new ways of doing things and and there's nothing wrong with that so I'm not going to hide that from you um, a lot of these things I, I know how to do like um, straight away but some of it I will need to look up and I'm going to do that like live on the recording um, and hopefully you know that's an important thing as well is seeing that process of, of how you know developers really work um, at least that's how I, I I've whenever I've done that kind of stuff 
that's how I work and I think a lot of people do work like that because there's too much stuff to just memorize um yeah so we're going to go through we're going to make this to-do list um in the next so many videos so something I didn't mention is you're probably thinking what kind of background knowledge do I need to be able to follow this tutorial if you're a student on my course you've already got the background knowledge you need um I've made this to I'm trying to make this series so that you can watch it at any time um and it will help you with your coursework I'm going to be teaching the framework differently in this series of videos than I am in the lectures now one thing that's difficult about teaching uh the model view controller um pattern is that it's unclear where to start like you could easily teach this starting by first introducing the model or first introducing the view or first introducing the controller each part you need to know stuff about the other parts um, to understand it so I'm going to be teaching it a different order in these videos than I am in lectures and hopefully if you didn't get on with the way I taught it in lectures you might get on with the way I'm teaching it in these videos um, if you're not on the course, uh, the kind of background that you're going to need is some basic programming knowledge. Like there's a lot, you know, well, I, I, object oriented programming. Um, we're going to be using C sharp and JavaScript. Um, I'm not going to like be teaching you C sharp or JavaScript. I, I will, um, you know, I, I'm assuming some basic knowledge. Um, so you need to know that. Okay, so in this first video, I, I've kind of gone through the main things I want to talk about. I'm not going to start coding at this stage. Um, as far as when I'm going to be posting videos, uh, my aim is to get all of the videos done before my students start in October. So I'm going to be doing it over the next few weeks, hopefully get most of them done. At least these first few, like these first four um checks checklists uh, i should be able to get done within a week um maybe these are kind of more extension things um so as if you're one of my students like these videos probably are all going to be up already because you're going to have started um if you're not one of my students um i will be posting these as i make them um so today i'm only going to be posting this introduction video but check back uh, for more details if you follow me on twitter at Dr. Sean Walton, then I will be posting on there as soon as I post videos. Um, and if you've got any questions, like I said, just ask me however um, however you can. What I am going to talk about today, though, is I just want to talk about the MVC pattern, um, like in general. So we're going to be using ASP.NET MVC, which is ASP.NET model view controller to make a web application. And what this, the whole point of this, this framework or pattern is to separate concerns between different areas of our application. So we have the model is going to be a set of classes that describe our data. Um, so for us, it's going to be, our model is going to be our a to-do item or a, will be the basic model the basic class is going to be a to-do item and then we're going to have a collection of those which will be our to-do list and we're also going to have a model that represents our user so they are our models and they're going to be they'll live in a database um yeah so the and then the view defines how the ui would be displayed so this is going to be um it's going to be written in the language when we write this in is we're going to be writing this in is razor which is a kind of combination between c sharp and html um which is is what's used in net so the view is is all to do with how our application looks um, and defines the ui now the controller classes are what actually handle communication from the user and linking that with the model um so any kind of logic we're going to be writing in our controller uh, so it tells it's going to tell the view what to display and it's going to also update the model and so this kind of shows how how these things are all linked and you and hopefully now you can see why it's difficult to figure out where to start teaching this because it's this like it's it's very cyclical like it 
everything depends on everything else. Um, so in, what we're going to do is in this series of videos, we're going to start with a model and then we're going to move. Well, we're going to, I'm going to start with a model and then we're going to move in a, a logical way that we would build an application and teach it that way. Um, so I'm not going to worry about going through here. Well, no, yeah, okay. I might as well. So that was the M model view controller pattern in general, which could be applied to anything. Um, but we're looking at it in ASP.NET specifically applied to web applications. So what we're going to have is our models, um, which are going to be classes or objects that represent data. And this data, like I said, is stored in a database. And .NET provides us with this a data access layer, which is a simplified interface for getting into this database. So we're not going to be writing out like my SQL um, like queries this this is um dot net will do that for us we're going to write in a, a we're going to write in c sharp what we want and then the dot net will be writing those um queries for us and performing them when required we don't have to worry about that and that's what this data access layer is like that interface that we use the view is a template that's going to dynamically generate html so based on the controller um and based on the models, we're going to get different HTML, um, which is you know, how we view, see the list, see our list of to-dos or whatever. And the controller is a class that manages this relationship between the models and the view. And it responds to user input and it takes that input and then it does something with the model and then it decides what we should see, which view to call to render. So that's all I want to talk about in this video so hopefully you've got an idea what the videos are about and if this is going to be of interest to you so i'm going to start out in the next video uh, making a new project and getting in there and start coding so like i said um you're probably not going to have any questions or comments right now but um you know or as always just uh, comment if you have any questions okay thanks